Welcome to Who Knew. We are fans of the current series of Doctor Who, and here we discuss our likes, dislikes, and insights into the modern regeneration of the show. Today we're taking a quick trip in the TARDIS to visit the second Doctor. It's Who Classic. Classic. Today's, today's episode is Tomb of the Cybermen. It's written by Kit Pedler, the unofficial science advisor to the show at the time, and Jerry Davis. It originally aired on the 2nd of September through the 23rd of September, 1967. And it was uh, directed by Morris Berry, and episode 4 received the highest ratings, 7.4 million viewers. The so do- I was a week old when this show epi- aired. Oh, so I give it four spit ups. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor is played by Patrick Troughton. Jamie is played by Fraser Hines and Victoria is played by Deborah Watling. First impressions. Hi, this is Frank. I like the whole storyline. I thought it was a good storyline. So very impressed with it. I'm liking the second doctor a lot more. The more I actually watch his episodes because a lot of them were lost and I don't even have a lot of memories of him, but he's very, Charlie Chaplin, that tramp, mm. kind of the goof, but knowing what's going on and just playing that mm-hmm. the Columbo role, <laughs> you know, to just disarm people. But you can see in a lot of this, he knows what's going on. Right. And he's setting them up to, I'm giving you an option. You're trapping yourself. Okay, now I know for sure. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I liked it. Cool. Hi, this is Auburn. Yeah, I think overall I enjoyed it as well. I know I, I was warned a little bit about the production values, but uh, <laughs> e- like Frank said, the the story was was pretty solid. I mean, I grew up watching like uh, old Star Trek, Star Trek: The Next Generation, Power Rangers, so I'm used to seeing people in bad suits and suspending <laughs> my disbelief. Um, so I got over that. Uh, but it, it definitely felt like an episode of Doctor Who. Watching it, I mm-hmm. felt if it was condensed to an hour-long format, it could fit in the lineup today. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Josh. Uh, yeah, I was actually surprised how engaged I was. Um, nice. Everything that you were saying, too, about the production value, you just sort of take it for what it is, but you get a kick out of it at the same time. But when I was a kid, anything, any slow-moving, impending threat, like zombie-like, used to scare the heck out of me. So I think <laughs> if I was a kid, even watching this now, it would have really creeped me out especially it being in black and white and stuff Mm -hmm. but i like the second doctor this is the first thing i ever saw of him and your explanation frank you were just talking about it's a good that's a good sum up Uh, but (laughs) it did it totally felt like an episode i did think they sure stretched out some of those shots Uh, (laughs) hi this is brian um i actually i really love this episode i think this is one of the best episodes of the classic series and the second doctor is really one of my favorite doctors i really like patrick troughton the way he handles a doctor and the way not only not only the way he um says his dialogue but just his reactions when other people are talking are great you can always see that he's as the doctor is thinking and he has pretty much figured out most people before all the rest of the characters and you can just tell it by the way he looks at them hi this is eugene i own two copies of this story so i do enjoy this one so Uh, do i (laughs) it's it's fun i like the cybermen so it's great that we're going to get the cybermen again and the second doctor I do want to say that, sorry that uh, Kelsey and Arlene can't be with us today. <laughs> right, yes. they can't Because I want to hear their points of view on some of these issues that come up in this. Oh, I'm sure they would have had some things to say about it. Because this is definitely <laughs> of its that. time. It's like we need that <laughs> right now for this. But. The Doctor and Jamie welcome their new companion, Victoria, into the TARDIS. They travel to planet Telos and meet a group of archaeologists who are attempting to locate the entrance to the buried city of the Cybermen. Professor Perry and his crew blast Rock away from the entrance to find a set of large doors. When one of his crew tries to open the doors, he is electrocuted. Captain Hopper and some of the crew take the body back to the rocket. I think it's a nice introduction. They're walking right into the TARDIS, and Victoria is a new companion, so they're explaining to her about the TARDIS. And I think it's just nicely done. This is also where he mentions for the very first time how old he is. Was oh, is it really? That's the first time? Yeah. So he's 450 years old, approximately. I find it interesting that the Cybermen have been dormant and dead for over 500 years. So the Doctor's younger than the whole Cybermen. It's just the whole time travel aspect. Oh, yeah. Going well, back, dealing with them, but uh-huh. in his chronological 
life is 450 and this whole period is the, right. no cybermen for 500 has he had the first doctor encountered them yes it okay. was, he encountered them in his last serial before he regenerated into the second doctor oh, okay. the 10th planet the doctor mentions that he like tech speak about how right. he basically created the whole time travel situation which well that's talking to victoria so we can talk a little bit about who victoria is uh, victoria waterfield she's from 1867 and in the last episode which is the uh, series finale okay. season four which is yep. the doctor's first, the second doctor's first season, was Evil of the Daleks. And he meets Victoria's father, who was actually trying to make a time machine. So that whole storyline is he's making a time machine using uh, static electricity and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> but mirrors plays a kind of a thread throughout some of the other episodes and there's turn left and they use mirrors coming up in another episode mm. um, get to from one world to another and deal with time travel and all that but to get victoria to understand what's going on he's relating it to what her father was working on oh okay. so that's like he's perfected this without going into the whole detail of time lords without going into the whole detail of a whole mm -hmm. different race that already has this technology right so. right also is this the planet of telos or the city of telos for this <laughs> <laughs> it's a little convoluted, uh, the origin of... Maybe Telos uh, is the capital city of Telos, the planet. Yeah, like, like, like New, New York, New York. Because yeah. in this... In this serial they refer to it as the city of telos but in future episodes it's the planet of telos and so now it's just kind of become known as the planet of telos which is not where the cybermen are from they're from mondas but we'll get to that i also thought the introduction of the team was a bit weird because toberman was off on his own looking around and the other team members were like, you yeah. know, get your head down, get your head down. Why? You, you know, this is, you're being out exposed out in the open, but yeah. we're screaming our heads off and there's supposedly not going to be any consequences to that. I thought it was because there, the blast was going to go off soon and he was near yeah. it. No, that could be. That's what it was. Yeah, it was just used for like dramatic effect, even though we find out in the next scene, like, oh, no, he's not sinister. It's the explosion yeah, for yeah. uncovering the, the I think that's it, too. Like, like this big guy hulking around seems scary. And then all of a sudden, other people are just normal people are just yelling at him. I found it funny. Everyone's dressed in futuristic outfits and one guy has a plaid shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's <laughs> dressed from Old Navy. <laughs> and it looks like in the... shoes you'd wear today. Like, I know. What archaeological expedition dresses like this? Yeah. Well, they hit the actor they, just showed up in that for work and they went, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> they got but the I 2017 want... styles down <laughs> from the 60s. Is that what year it was supposed to be? Wait, did they even say well, what year it was I mean, supposed to be? I mean, if they were future dress, they it's did future. look very modern. Like, yeah. they didn't look 60s no. or 70s dress. Except for the hair. Except for the hair. I did like that the uh, stock explosion actually matched <laughs> yes. the surrounding... <laughs> rock <laughs> this time rather than what happened in time warrior oh. and when they're outside they shoot it differently on film on film and i thought yeah. the captain was better and his on film his you know american english mm -hmm. was better and then it gets a little more Deliated. totally dramatic Who knows? <laughs> yeah that's fine i kept making notes out of the the americanisms he kept saying <laughs> it was obviously written that way if it was if it was an american show and we had a british guy on it he would have been saying pip pip and cheerio and <laughs> blimey i reckon they wouldn't have done it, but I kept expecting him to be like, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> we did. They Let's said, back to the he does Christ say at one point, for Pete's sake. Yeah, for Pete's sake. Yeah. Yeah. He does say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you tell him. Do we know if that guy was British or... Uh... He was from Austria. Austria. Oh, my gosh. Apparently by way of the Bronx. <laughs> The doctor confirms the electricity is no longer a threat, and they gain entrance to a large control room. There are two additional doors leading out of the room as well as a large, closed hatch. Professor Perry decides to divide them into three smaller groups to search the building more efficiently. He stays in the main control room with the doctor and Mr. Kleeg. They figure out a way to turn on the power, but the doctor is wary that the Cybermen may not be dead after all. Oh yeah, I, uh, I also <laughs> noticed when they were climbing up to... to, to go to the door they showed that whole yep. shot it's all <laughs> one shot like wow we got this location we, <laughs> let's just get the whole shot of them climbing <laughs> looks like the door was on a side of a mountain <laughs> with no ledge and they're all standing together on the ledge <laughs> so it's like okay but it's just production at the time and then there was one it was like, not a big deal when they walked up to it it was it was uh like like a process shot it was a process shot and then they were there and i was trying to and then i realized later on when they're at the door it's filmed on video with mm -hmm 
when mm-hmm. they're that process shot it was filmed on films yeah i know it started to figure that out in the last episode like oh that's why they shot it in that sequence Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but because some was on location some was in the studio and there was one (laughs) bit too where the uh i think it was the skinny scientist he 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 points to look at something in the and he and it's the the camera is by the door so you're seeing out Mm -hmm. and he points look up there but then it cuts to the other way and he quickly turns around so he doesn't (laughs) jump cut because literally he was pointing at the door but he's supposed to be pointing up on the mountain but since he was in the same place on screen and so it wouldn't jump th- when it cut he was facing the door he just he just quickly <laughs> quickly pointed up there wow so i in a way i thought like well they worked with what they had and they did yeah. a pretty good job of it in, in the commentary there uh, it was jamie and uh, victoria i think that were both on the commentary for this uh, oh, yeah. serial and they were saying how they had to do long takes that's why you see a lot of those uh yeah though they don't move or not move but they don't cut i mean mm-hmm. and when they flub a line they continue moving i noticed a lot of flubs yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I think the limitations of video editing at the time yeah. wasn't what it is today, so they just had to power through if something went well, wrong. Especially when an actor doesn't realize that somebody's going to be saying a, a lot, like, mm-hmm. I have two lines, there's supposed to be a line in between, Yeah, and they forget, and so yeah. they start talking, but then the other actor's like, wait, I need to say my line, and then they just... They keep going. They... they I- don't redo the, the, yeah. the yeah. scene. A couple times, though, it kind of made it seem a little more natural. Agreed. I mean, knowing mm-hmm. that now and knowing that they were told just keep going, mm-hmm. everybody stayed in character and it didn't, never really felt yeah. awkward. O- only once did I see someone go, oh, like that, like they, <laughs> they, they, they stopped themselves from talking. I mean, we talk over each other because, right. And that sort of added a naturalness to it. Yeah. I mean, yes. Wait for your line. We wait for your cue. But I liked it because it's it yeah. That yes, way. but we're also an editor's nightmare. <laughs> Isn't that right, Eugene? <laughs> Auburn. <laughs> There's a couple of lines here of the second doctor that I really love. When one of the team says to the doctor when they're trying to figure out who these people are and says, "Well, you're an archaeologist. I can just tell." Yeah. And I love the doctor's reaction. Really? Does it show? <laughs> yeah, it's just, I like that. And then there's another one where he's, he's, you know, they're going around the room and they're looking at everything. And, you know, you can t- tell that the doctor's already figured these people out. And he just has that one line, oh, I love to see experts at work. <laughs> With just a little bit of, ah, oh, bless, bliss. You know, I just like that this doctor is aware. I love his reactions. Watch Patrick Troughton in the background. He's always the most interesting person to be yeah. looking at. There are other lines that I really like, such as they say, yeah, there's only the one door that we came in. Yes, of course. And the other two that are there. (laughs) (laughs) And then Clegg Clegg asked, you know, what's your special technique? And he goes, keeping my eyes open and my mouth shut. shut. So it's a burn (laughs) and it's a great line. I do kind of like that all the people here know the Cybermen. And they want to seek them out. Well, they know they're dangerous, but, you know, human beings would still explore and still want to learn and and see what technology that humans can use and adapt rather than the is the humans just stumble across something and they don't know what it is Mm -hmm. yeah i tried to equate it to the egyptians or something like when we would go into the tombs no one worried about the egyptians coming to life Mm -hmm. right so and we didn't worry about the curse right that then killed everybody (laughs) yeah mold yeah, mold. Uh, <laughs> toxic mold. Good, good archaeologists you are. They had mold. Victoria, Miss Captain, her guard Toberman, and Mr. Viner enter one of the doorways and find a Cyberman recharging room. Miss Captain sends Toberman on a secret mission. Then she uses the controls to trap Victoria in a Cyberman recharging bay. Before she can complete whatever plans she has, the doctor arrives and frees Victoria. Did you notice how they cut away because Victoria couldn't have gotten in there because of her skirt? <laughs> yeah, because of the way the shape is. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is where we see the, the cardboardy sets yeah. because when they're banging on the, the <laughs> door it's obviously like plywood <laughs> i wish they would have done some sound design just something, something else yeah even when toberman opened the big heavy door yeah he it, he, it he, wob- he kind of pulled it off he until does. he let go of it and it wobbles like it yeah. was light like you say he, he does a great job acting like that door is heavy yeah. until he doesn't touch it yeah. and then it starts to like <laughs> float in the breeze <laughs> I just love how this is Borg 1.0. Yes. I mean, this is so... You can totally tell that yeah. the Borg were kindly and homage. You not, a ripoff? Yeah. Not, not <laughs> kindly. It would be a ripoff. Um, I mean, it's just... It's a it's a regeneration chamber. Yeah. Alcove. It don't, it's just... I just laugh going, I knew that they were influenced by the Cybermen. I never had, idea, it, had any idea how much. Right. At the time watching it, 
uh, I I was surprised that they would just jump to rejuvenation mm-hmm. thing, and maybe that's because there's more history with the Cybermen that I was unaware of as a viewer. But they might have had as archaeologists like that knowing the Cyberman life cycle that they had this <laughs> rejuvenation chamber but my first thought in a tomb or mm-hmm. any place like that would have been sacrifice right chamber because they do they do make it look very egyptian yeah with and the it's writing. very ominous mm-hmm. or like a, a transformation chamber but yeah. i they, oh, they yeah. get into that a little bit by the end but not as much i think as we do in our current i don't yeah. know if mm-hmm. any other classic series the cybermen had such total uh i don't think so no it was okay. more of what we see now okay but yeah so it was just interesting to me how the immediate assumption was rejuvenation chamber yeah yeah well like you said apparently they've been studying the cybermen so they or just a quick way to, for exposition this is what it is yeah that's a good point <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go point. into it too much because yeah. we don't waste the time on it yeah the doctor does do that with the cybermen which we haven't gone to but it's very quick so maybe that's their way of doing that too yeah. for this thing yeah I also thought that some some of the acting was actually quite good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy who plays yeah. Krieg and and then the, the not the not the American captain, but the the, the head scientist or whatever he was, Cle- the, uh, the guy with Perry. the beard. The guy with the beard, like yeah, he's they were both Perry. like they were selling what they were thinking mm-hmm. and feeling, and, mm-hmm. and even with some of the hokey dialogue, like I, I didn't feel it dumbed down and I didn't feel it very stagey. The only time I felt things like that is when there was blocking and they had to like, do things like that. Yeah. But, uh, and it reminded me of the shows now where it's just like the acting sells the silliness a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, even of that time, like cause, uh, some of the acting is is stagey just because that's how television acting was. I felt they were very real. Agreed. Just playing off that, Josh, I also thought at this time I started noticing Jamie and the doctor's relationship. Mm-hmm. Like when they first enter, they kind of grab each other's hands yes. by mistake and drop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think there's another thing even in the part where we're at now where you see their character together. Yeah. And, and I don't know Jamie. I don't know the second doctor. Yes. But I feel like I really understand their relationship through the few mm-hmm. interactions they yeah. have. Yeah. There's a comfort level there that we've been discussing in the, in the modern show of how long, you know, Rose becoming comfortable with the doctor. We're already seeing uh, a companion doctor relationship that's already at that that comfort comfort point well even jamie in the beginning says this is how we fly the tardis she's like fly yeah <laughs> i also love that where he's also he's also teasing the doctor in that opening scene mm-hmm. where he's like you know don't don't scare her just just take off don't yeah. make it shaky <laughs> smooth take off. and the doctor gets insulted going smooth take off like how dare you suggest such a thing so you can kind of <laughs> see that these two people are really comfortable with each other we didn't we didn't really talk about jamie but you have heard of him before. Yes. Yeah. Um, Jamie is a Scottish Highlander that the doctor picked up on one of his travels. He's from... 1746. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, he was picked up at the Battle of Culloden. Um, but Jamie is a very, very popular companion. And he was with the second doctor throughout almost the second doctor's entire run on the show mm. and we recently did the episode about tooth and claw where um the doctor and rose meet up with queen victoria in scotland in scotland the doctor and introduces himself to queen victoria as dr james mccrimmon which is jamie yeah i got you <laughs> you have to spell that out for me <laughs> we were doing so <laughs> jamie and mr hayden take the other doorway and find a lifeless little mouse-like cybermat With the power restored, Hayden starts to pull levers, activating a light panel on the wall. Jamie is hypnotized by its swirling pattern. Hayden switches the device off, and Jamie is back to normal. Wondering why the Cybermen would need something like that, Hayden has Jamie turn it on again so he can analyze it. The Doctor and the others rush in and try to turn off the device, but are too late. A Cyberman appears before the light wall. A power gun emerges from the other side of the room and shoots towards the Cyberman, but hits Hayden instead, killing him. The (laughs) Cybermats. This is our first introduction to the Cybermat. And we also get introduced to that wonderful sting every time we see a Cybermat. (laughs) The musical (laughs) cue is so blatant. It kind of reminded me of uh, City Eels. Mm-hmm. Wrath of Khan. Mm-hmm. 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 But the interesting thing about the Cybermats is that the Daleks were so popular merchandise-wise that they tried to make a Cybermat similar. This is a thing that's going to be a toy because they weren't introduced in the 10th planet, which is the first appearance of the Cybermen. And so I think that that's... I don't really like it. <laughs> With its little felt yeah, cut-out teeth. teeth. <laughs> so bizarre. And the, and the, and the eyes. Sh- 
Yeah. <laughs> it's great stagecraft, I will say that. <laughs> well, because they shot those on film when there's a close-up, and uh-huh. then later on it's on video when it's the practical running mm-hmm. around. And the, sh- the sizes shift between what the story needs so it's just yeah there are two sizes in the it's episode so inconsistent so yeah no they're just bigger ones i just don't like it <laughs> because victoria can put it in her purse and then the other ones the cybermen have to use two hands to hold them <laughs> that's your problem with the production of this episode <laughs> i thought the, I I thought thought the idea was that it was like a baby or something i, I don't maybe because it's dead it's shriveled up and it's smaller and then the other ones are alive i don't really know <laughs> And that's the whole thing. They just introduce Cybermats in this episode and don't explain it. Yeah. They just say, here, this is it. Later on, they give a little explanation of what it does. But not possibly. a lot. <laughs> but just go with it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's also like the doc- like we said before, the doctor's explanation. Like, that's a Cybermat. That's what that is. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and he has it from his, is that his 400-year-old diary or 900-year-old diary that he's reading from? Do you know? I think so. Okay. Yeah. But it is just yeah. kind of just there. That's what I thought it was, because what else would he be? I didn't even notice he was reading from... Yeah, he looks up Cybermat. Yeah, it's in his little book. Yeah, I thought it would be like a field log or something of his travels. Or like the Grail Diary. diary. Yeah. (laughs) The doctor recreates the accident and discovers it is a testing room for weapons. Victoria finds the Cybermat and places it in her purse, as Toberman quietly tells Captain that his mission is done. Perry decides they need to return to Earth since two men have already died. Captain Hopper arrives and tells them that someone has tampered with the fuel rods, which will take 72 hours to repair. They are stuck here. I got a kick out of the, the fellow in the plaid shirt, how his, his <laughs> technique to not get hypnotized is to put up his two hands, to put up his hands to oh filter the hypnotic suggestion. <laughs> well, and every time it's the same hand gesture like he that is that the is, approved tai chi hand gesture <laughs> to walk. It's funny, they thought it in basic training when 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 attacked by a hypnotic attack put the uh, venusian jiu-jitsu <laughs> stance <laughs> oh, the, the venusian venusian jiu-jitsu? jiu-jitsu or something like that yeah <laughs> yeah i also thought it was funny that they put the pl- guy with the plaid shirt with the kilt with the plaid kilt <laughs> it was a clever set design <laughs> yeah other thing i got a I liked, I don't know if it was unintentional or happy accident or, or, or intentional, but um, because of the style of the, the sets, everything being like uh, base one color and everything and, and lighter because it's metallic, the doctor really stood out because mm-hmm. he's wearing his black co- clothes. So he, he, you could always see him everywhere. He was very prominent. Um, prominent. It's good set design. Yeah, I do. Design. I do like the black. Some of the black and white stuff because of that. Fact. Yeah, it's because very, the shadows are super dark. Yeah, and it, they didn't. I don't know how much they thought of the black and white. That the contrast tonally, the contrast. Mm-hmm. I like how they don't explain about how the fuel rods were damaged, what happened. But we all know it's Toberman. Oh yeah, they don't have yeah, to yeah, show it to us. They it, don't yeah. have to give us a whole you know mm-hmm. exposition of it. It's she sends him on some mission. You don't know what it's. A, not really focused on but mm-hmm. you put it together but but he does uh walk out at in, when they're in the on the set and they're having their little scene and he does walk out sneakily behind them which is totally going yes. i am on an evil mission <laughs> <laughs> i felt he should have reported back to her a little more um out of breath because that <laughs> rocket and the hill it's just far <laughs> but yeah. he must be some athlete <laughs> yeah. and are we are we going to discuss how this is the Racist. Tall, tall, yeah. racist. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Gonna racism. Bring, it's, I was going to bring that up this, in a minute, that too. It's the tall, well-built black man who apparently can't talk much. much. I mean, he, he, he is basically nothing but muscle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then and well, how about the bad guys are Middle Eastern? Oh, right. The uh, one scientist, uh, Viner. Oh, I didn't even realize Is it Viner Klieg? Both of them. And the Klieg woman. And oh, the, both him and the woman had oh, yeah, some yeah. sort of, you know, Middle Eastern-esque. Mm-hmm ethnicity to them well kaftan's accent is quite all over the place <laughs> depending on what yeah. which scene you're in yeah. it's like oh okay well now you're from london okay great <laughs> but i still like that the group is sort of international even though yeah the that's what i like well, yeah. that was, that was international even though uh Klieg or krieg Klieg, Klieg. Klieg and and the woman i can't remember her name Kaftan. Um, um they they weren't bumbling they weren't you know they were smarter than everyone else as well so yeah. it wasn't like a bad depiction of Someone. They just but, happen to be the bad guys. Yeah, it's like you know. it's like in Star Wars, all the Brits, all the Empire yeah. Brits, our Empire Imperial officers. Yes. <laughs> 
I like the internationalism of the crew, so mm-hmm. I don't see that as bad, except for Toberman. I do feel that. That, that was, was very, very obvious. Mm-hmm. Very you obvious. know, very just... Ooh, but you know, that, you never know. That's just not a good... They may, have, they may have auditioned a whole bunch of big guys, and he was the best one. You never know. Yeah, I think the, the problem that we have today with Toberman's character isn't so much that he was a bad guy, but just how one-dimensional. Like, he was already a Cyberman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, He was already right. taking mm-hmm. orders and didn't that's have his point. own a very good agency. Point. So that's, that's what I find the problem and i understand it is a product of its time so i i accept that but just knowing and also then celebrate how far we've come today with sure. characters like yeah. mickey and martha yeah. and mm-hmm. you know but we definitely the past is right there like yeah. not very far away yeah. so it's no. it's good to be reminded of that and we're also seeing the show sexism too yeah oh, yeah uh, you know that's on display here um i was waiting for the cat to call victoria toots <laughs> well, they call her but, Vic. They call her Vic. Yeah. Hey, Vic. But I still think that's more of a commentary on how casual Americans are, rather than a man demeaning a woman. Yeah. I just think that the British people are like Americans are just too informal, and they need to just stop that. Um, but the sexism here, where it's like, no, Victoria, you're going to stay up here while we go explore. Yeah. With the oh. other woman. But at the same time, it's not complete because there is that moment where the doctor is also like. But you also have to keep an eye on Kaftan because yeah. I don't mm-hmm. trust her. So he is kind of giving her a job, but it's still like, and I'm giving you this job out of harm's way. Yeah. But there is a little difference to it in that there is a main villain who is a woman and a yeah. help you know, companion. And their fight was not pulling hair. I almost knew <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, was yeah. gun and, yeah. and everything. I almost, and I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, just one more point. Um Victoria was, no, I'm not staying here. We're going on and looking at the other rooms. It was down in the hatch that they said no, and that's when Doctor says, no, you have to do a job here. That's I think, true, yeah. I think if Captain wasn't staying up above, she Doctor would say, yeah. no, Victoria's coming with us. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, Victoria coming from the 1800s. Yeah. Had strength and sass to talk back and later on puts down the Captain. Oh, so mm-hmm. glad to have a strong man around. <laughs> 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 And the captain, this is, there's a, there's a great, there's a great bad American accent in this, at this moment where he's like, he comes in and he's like, well, you guys, I, I'm going to tell you something right now. I mean, that's just so <laughs> yeah. badly done. <laughs> we don't talk that way. At least not. Well, he didn't sound Austrian. At least not in California. <laughs> I think from my uh, current understanding of the Doctor Who series, I would have liked to have seen the TARDIS one more time. I think we only had it at the beginning and then at the end, we don't even. Not they didn't even. have it at the beginning. They just no. walked down from the mountaintop. Well, you no, heard no, at the, the very beginning of the... We of have the, the interior. interior. The cereal. The cereal. Oh, okay. There is an exterior of it. Yeah, but I, I thought you were but, talking... Yeah, never mind. But I wish, you know, and I understand with the, probably the timing and the production values and everything, they couldn't yeah. do another scene there, but... But you hear it. Yeah, we never yeah. see the TARDIS enough. The doctor. third doctor didn't use it at all. He had a car. But it really it wasn't so, important. It was just their device to get them somewhere to where yeah. the story so starts. So they would just mention it and boom, the story's going. Right. Hmm. Well, just like when they arrive on Telos, you hear it and they're like, there's a ship landing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to just materialize, but whatever. <laughs> I don't know that. And then when they're walking down that cliff, it's obvious that the doctor has his back turned so that he doesn't see them. Oh, uh, right. It's so weird. <laughs> Whatever. And well, there's also that uh, um, uh, stage acting technique, mm-hmm. you know, so you either usually in those deep dramatic sequences where it's like, I must turn my back and emote <laughs> towards the camera while the person <laughs> behind me can even use talking. So that happens every once in a while. And it's like, oh, you, you couldn't afford a second setup where you get the reaction <laughs> shots. Okay. Because the cameras were too big to move, probably. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it up now since you're talking about the cameras, but later on there's some fight scenes in the same room that are obviously switched to film, like with uh, with mm-hmm. Toberman and the yeah. Cybermen and stuff. And at first I was like, why does that look different? Because it didn't look very different, mm. but it was just different enough. And then I realized, oh, that was probably shot on film. Because they could. Because they could. Yeah. And that's probably it, probably because I bet you the film camera was more mobile. Yes, to, to take where the action was. To take was. the action yeah. shots. Mm-hmm. Ah, there you go. Well, we can't shoot this. Okay, I'm starting to put two and two together. <laughs> I'm going back to the... And six. he's actually getting four. <laughs> Three and a half. It's all symbology. Cleeg, <laughs> <laughs> with an unknown assist from the doctor, discovers how to open the hatch. 
They decide to explore the lower level of the building, but the doctor asks Victoria to stay and keep an eye on Kaftan. The group comes across the frozen honeycomb tombs of the Cybermen. Captain drugs Victoria and closes the hatch, trapping the others below. Klieg, in a fake attempt to reopen the hatch, turns on a machine that reawakens the Cybermen. Viner tries to shut it down, but Klieg kills him. People Ooh, are action. dropping like flies. Yeah. I mean, and main <laughs> characters yeah. in this, or at least uh, main I mean, guest characters. Yes, who actually have lines and all that, not just the extras mm-hmm. are being killed, you know, like we see in Daleks and things. But it's like, wow, they just killed a lot of people in the Yeah, movies. like one right off the bat from the door and then continuing on. It's like how it was done back then. It was, yeah. no, this is going to be a dangerous type of yeah. story. I mean, it fits in line with all the emoting or whatever uh, of the tombs of Egypt or, you know, like booby traps and things. So, of course, it's going to be dangerous the shots of the tomb defrosting yeah the defrosting <laughs> yeah. the were slow motion movement from within the cells mm-hmm. and the plastic wrap being broken the cellophane <laughs> yeah. um it's it was cre- it, 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 uh, yeah that's the thing it's, it's like you look at it and laugh at the the staging the staging and the silliness of it but there's also a, still a creepiness factor and this is actually a very famous um shot when you talk to Doctor Who fans. Oh, really? Yeah. Doctor Who fans are like, oh, those tomb- tombs of the Cybermen are just, they're just so creepy. And even though, you know, when, when it's we see it defrosting, it's obviously a quickly done miniature yeah. mm-hmm. in time lapse. When you actually see, when you actually get closer and the Cybermen are inside behind the cellophane moving around, that's like a three-story. Yeah. yeah. That's the, a big set. Yeah, the practical that, is... I mean, they put a lot of money into that. And they and they and you can tell because they linger on it a yeah. really, really yeah. long yeah. time. Oh, yeah. But they were like, we spent a lot of money on this. We're going to show people where they're moving around and climbing the ladders. And it's, it. I, yes. Is it well done by today's standards? Oh. Absolutely not. Is yeah, it amazing the, for what they could do back then? Yes. Yeah. And, and two kids or even people watching TV back then, they never really saw anything like that before. So it's. Yeah. And that's why yeah, it's famous because people who saw it yeah. when it first aired, it's stuck in their mind. Yeah. I think it's funny, though, that there's like, what, they are uh, nine Mm-hmm. Cybermen are a huge well, threat to the world. Well, ten, including. ten, including. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, whereas now, <laughs> they, they even if they shot it even a little bit later, they could have shot the same exact thing, but then just superimposed right. many more. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little surprised they didn't do trickery to multiply the amount of Cybermen. You know, one zombie makes more yeah, zombies. That's true. One Cyberman's going to make true. more Cybermen. And that that kind of goes to what I was saying early on about how engaged I was. Like, just the idea of these things, like, at first glance, it's like, oh, my God, look what they did. They used a miniature and just dissolved from one piece of, you know, one less snow covered to the other. But the idea of it kept me watching. And then the way that the actors were selling it kept me watching. Mm-hmm. Well, a little bit of behind the scenes for that defrosting effect. It was uh, the miniature, like Brian said, and then they would spray. They would film it, and then they would spray um, frosting that you get, or the snow that you get on the uh, uh, Christmas trees. Flocking. Yeah, they would spray that onto it, and then to defrost it, they reversed it in the film. Well, yeah. I'm just like that's simple but effective. Yeah. <laughs> well, even when at the end when they were going back into the yes. tomb, it was just just reversed it's like they really but it knew did how look to creepy. Yeah. like we shot that footage how can yeah. we use it again <laughs> I'll agree with uh, Brian and Josh. I, I really enjoyed this sequence um, every time they went to it. Uh, and, and I did. I really loved it. I um, I think the scale of it really was the first time we saw something mm-hmm. that felt big with all of them breaking out. That was cool. And again, like the board connection today, that right. honeycomb, mm-hmm. the idea yeah. that these are more insect-like or like the hive mentality mm-hmm. rather than individuals. these are individual. Yeah. No, I really liked it. And the and music, too, was really the cool. The music's very iconic. I re- yes, I really like that music. Yeah. They don't bring it back, do they? Like This, is actually, this is actually brought back from the Moonbase episode, which okay. is the previous appearance of uh, the Cybermen. But in our current series, I, no, I, don't, no. I didn't recognize it's it. Different. But I like it a lot. Yeah, but that's... and boy, that's some robot costume. <laughs> that, ooh, boy, that really ooh, well done. And honestly, it's actually an improvement over the very first time oh, the Cybermen really? appeared. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> even even the voice is much better. Yeah, I found the voice pretty hard to understand. Yeah, I'm usually pretty good at hearing. 
Mm. Voices like that. I think it was a, a, a technology thing where mm-hmm. they were like, hey, we can do this on set. You think that was on set? They it, did that? It, it was on set. Yeah. Oh, wow. The Doctor really? Who does a lot of their, all the Dalek voices are on set, even to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it, they have somebody standing off camera going into the modulator and it comes out and that, you know, they could ADR some of it later, but they actually do film it. Oh, wow. On set. Jumping a little bit ahead, because we haven't gotten there yet, when the controller comes out uh, in the commentary, they said that his, because you can see his um, his mouth mm-hmm. flap There's move. parts, yeah. Yeah, so the actor was actually moving that to the guy off screen with mm. the voice. So they that's how we know that, mm-hmm. that that's how it was. My only big complaint about the outfits, well, I have two big complaints. <laughs> These are machines, and the circles around the leader's eyes was like masking tape or black electric tape, and it wasn't perfectly. <laughs> round yeah. the circle was round but the tape around it was obviously like, like it tape. was even it was even wrinkled from being pushed around <laughs> the circle that's your problem with the production of this episode <laughs> that and he had these tubes that were all you know running up and down him which looked pretty cool until i noticed that when it reached the top of him they weren't connected to anything nope. it was just open mm-hmm. they didn't even put one of those uh balls that that, that, that were separating the tubes that from ran the, joints, the rest of them it was like, just yeah. this open tube those were his ventilation tubes yeah, right. <laughs> well i also think okay, it's now about that, that gigantic pink <laughs> pink brain on the top That's of right. his head needed to be cooled down. I think it's because we're watching these now on high definition televisions. Yes, but back you then, that stuff. it oh, was back hidden. Then, yeah, it, it was, was probably hidden. just blow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Also, too, there was one later on in the show. One of the suits was ripped. Like, yes, when he's yeah. climbing or descending, I think from the ladder, yeah. you yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see yeah. the scenes. I'm sure yeah. none of that showed up, especially no. with the reception you get with yeah. snow yeah. effect on your regular TV. Yeah, we nobody's like gonna static see that. Snow. Yeah, yeah. Because on the on the the one that has just this story on the DVD, the comment, uh, not the commentary, the special features mention how they did restoration. So that's probably why too. Uh-huh. It cleaned it up so we could see more detail right. rather than what Wires. it was back then. Because yeah, yeah. they were so they, when they had some of the robots in the foreground, you could see the balls. They were like wiffle balls, right? Which was actually a good idea. I thought, but some of them are crushed, you know, just because from all the shooting, <laughs> yeah. it was probably something that was shot later. Yeah, we're seeing this way, way clearer than it was ever and, intended creatively. Yeah. Victoria wakes up and is held at gunpoint by Captain. The cyber mat escapes from Victoria's purse and knocks out Captain. Victoria grabs the gun and shoots the cyber mat. She leaves to get Captain Hopper. Below in the tombs, Klieg explains that he is part of the Brotherhood of Logicians and wants the power of the Cybermen at his control. He thinks they will feel obligated to help him since he is the one who resurrected them. The Cybermen are freed and release their leader, the Controller. Instead of feeling obligated, the Controller states that they will be assimilated. Resistance. I mean, to struggle is futile. <laughs> the Cybermen... I've heard that before. Someone should write that down. <laughs> the Cybermen say they purposely froze themselves to be hidden from the Doctor. He had destroyed their homeworld and their supplies were low. They knew that someday humans would free them. The expedition group are to be the first in a new army of Cybermen who will conquer the Earth. And that's why there's not that many of them. I didn't catch that the Doctor was the cause of them yes. doing that. So like, real, real quick, in the, the serial, the moon base, they're attacking a moon base. <laughs> and there's something with the gravity, so the remaining Cybermen are basically lifted off of the moon. Uh. And that's supposed to be the last, I think, of all the Cybermen. And then there's this tomb here. Well, it's also that in the 10th planet, the Doctor destroys Mondas, uh, which is the yeah. home planet of the Cybermen. Mm. So, you know, they and, and this, this the Cyber Controller says to the Doctor, you destroyed our planet, we had nowhere to go. And the Doctor says, oh, that's why you went to the moon base. Okay, now it makes sense. Well, at the same time, they went, okay, because of the Doctor, the Doctor keeps defeating us, we need to hide. Mm-hmm. I think it was retconned. I don't think it was, yes. you know, stated, which you can, I can't really see that episode because a lot of it doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. You know, the moon base. There's a so. couple animated episodes inside the serial. Mm-hmm. So I think they just, you know, retconned it to try and get a good storyline that would continue. Because they also said that they're running out of all their supplies and how they can manufacture mm. new Cybermen. That's why I think they also went to Moon Base to get those supplies so they don't have those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the, the controller is way too plain. I like what the newer controller looks like that we're doing now. I get the exposed brain, but but the whole nothing on his chest, it just looks silly. It doesn't look mechanical. Yeah. I, I don't understand why they didn't do that. And you can tell he's different because he's super tall from all the other Cybermen. But, May, yeah, but maybe... <laughs> Maybe gizmos are like our fat. 
Actually, what it probably was is he has less things on him because he's doing the most moving and the most, and, and he had to fight and he yeah. had to be thrown Probably. and he had to throw people. And there's no way that that kit bashing on the other Cybermen would have survived it. I just, it looked too plain for me on the chest, but everything else was fine. Yeah. They could have uh, done electrical tape designs. <laughs> <laughs> Paper mache is a high technology. Yeah, they could have taken a, 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 a you know, magic marker. Drawn a, you know. We can't afford flour. <laughs> they could have done a magic marker. I don't, a piece of uh, cinema trivia. If you ever watched Godfather 2, uh, one of the scenes with Hyman Roth. Is it Hyman Roth? Who, Lee Strasberg? Please. Oh, I don't remember. I don't like those movies. They insist. Well, anyway, he, had a, he, was wearing a, he was wearing a cardigan, a white cardigan with a design on it. And for one... Uh, the shoots they lost it so they went out and got a white carnigan and took a sharpie marker <laughs> no. and even drew but the buttons on his wow. cardigan are drawn on with a sharpie marker and like there's like a little ziggy zag on there it's all <laughs> sharpie so if you look you'll wow. see it huh. well those cyber mats can sure jump though Yes, Hell they yeah. can. Right to her neck. It's, it's like, wow. Oh, it's the felt teeth. Gives you a lot of spring. Uh -huh. <laughs> then how many people, I mean, you haven't spoken about it yet too, but like, how many people pretend to be unconscious in these episodes? <laughs> 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 I do have to say a lot of these classic episodes I always laugh saying they're really good if you have a fast forward button I don't find myself fast forwarding this no one. I thought I was going to get a little bored and I didn't get bored at all yeah but then they have the chase scene where the Cybermen are going to get you all yeah. <laughs> they all start running past the same piece of scenery over and over <laughs> now run the other direction past the same piece of scenery over and over that's a Doctor Who tradition <laughs> Because in other ones, it seems like, okay, there's a massive underground tunnel mm -hmm. to the part of a city. This is just the same room, and it felt that way, no matter how they shot it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they it's probably like, could. the staircase is right there, mm -hmm. and you know it. <laughs> it's a tomb. Not going to be that big. But later on, they say, you know, they got lost down there or something. They can't find oh, a way yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just... They probably couldn't back the camera up further than right. 10, 20 feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All that being said, though, I thought that they did block it very well when Jamie pretends to go. He thinks he's going to go one way, but he goes the other way. Mm -hmm. was, they really made a point to make it as clear as possible. They are trying to use everything that they can on the budget that they have. Oh, totally. I thought it was very inventive with what they worked with. Mm -hmm. I just found what they worked with to be quite funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Victoria returns with Hopper and Jim Callum. They try to figure out how to open the hatch. Captain wakes up and pulls a gun on them, but gets distracted and the men gain the upper hand. They open the hatch and Hopper goes down to find the others. Hopper throws smoke grenades at the Cybermen as everyone, except for Toberman, escapes through the hatch. They lock Captain and Klieg away in the testing room. Yes, the weapons testing room, <laughs> since they have threatened and killed members of the crew. The Cybermen have captured Toberman and use the Cybermats to alter his mind. The Cybermats make their way up to the main control room and surround the expedition team. Jim shoots and kills one of them, while the Doctor uses a power cable to short out the rest of the creatures. So many things here. <laughs> I, before you get into things in depth, yeah. but I just have Jim, the co-pilot, He's an idiot. <laughs> I don't have a specific reason why, just he's an idiot. Also not a great shot. It takes him three shots to kill yeah. the thing where Victoria has <laughs> Who's never shot held it. Gets it. She's it. never held this type of a gun and she gets it in one. <laughs> Good for her. Uh, you, you can obviously see the wire on Toberman when he's being <laughs> thrown by the Cybermen. Again, you wouldn't have on the initial broadcast. Sure. But it is funny. It looks hilarious. But when you're taking notes and not quite looking at that moment, it looked pretty good how quickly you picked them up and then you watch it again. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> Either that or that was a, um, a film scratch that they forgot to get rid of. <laughs> a film scratch that followed him. <laughs> the whole, the hatch. I mean, I that really... That gets a lot of work. Yeah, but there's like these holes around it. A certain movements of people and the camera, it looked like somebody was underneath mm -hmm. the hatch to me. I don't know if you guys caught that, but I think it's the reflective material that is reflecting the actor outside of the hatch. So mm -hmm. it, it looked weird at one point, like mm -hmm. somebody was there, like, okay, are they going to open it? I need to move. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't notice. Yeah, I just yeah. also noticed how it's kind of jerky and... Very jerky. Yeah, it's like, okay. Everything's made out of wood. All, all, all the levers... No, oh my I mean, goodness! It the was kind of the never, buttons. You could never push those buttons. Yeah, like everything <laughs> was kind of neat design, but when you you heard it clunking yeah. around, shakum, shakum, like this, everything's supposed to be metal, and everything sounded like wood. It, it 
like they should have put some sort of cloth at the end of each lever so it didn't make that. There's just like little things that I'm thinking could, of especially now. Especially if you're going to use them so much. This yeah. should have been, you know, Doctor Who and the pulling of levers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh. everybody, I mean, the entire plot is surrounding pull the lever here, pull yeah. the lever I mean, here, I don't know how here. exactly how they edited it and how, what the video editing was like mm. back then, but you just need some sound effects yeah. over that stuff. That but, would have fixed that whole thing um, for me. Is this the scene where Jamie gets force lightninged? Maybe yeah. is it? Yeah, you get shot. It's just kind of like, oh shot. look, he got zapped. That looks terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did like Victoria thinking really quickly. They didn't show a lot of it, but her scream played on Captain's fear that Cyberman yes. because it already attacked her. Mm. And so oh, she just right. screams and totally distracts Captain and turns yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, because she she fakes <laughs> her out, right? Because like, mm-hmm. doesn't she like look over there? That was why she screams. Yeah, she looks yeah. and screams, and that's not a big setup like you would now. Mm-hmm. You'd see her eyes darting back and forth, going, "Oh, I have an idea. Look!" Mm-hmm. But no, she just did it, and I liked that it just happened. This is interesting because I think the way that the Cybermat jumps onto the table, then onto her shoulder, is through wires, right? That's the got to be the um, way they no, did that. No, when it gets in the table, I think they sped up the film. But from, frames the shul- out. but from the shoulder, the shoulder was oh, you shoulder. could see there was a wire yeah. there. It's just weird that that one is a little, it's harder to see than the one on Toberman. But right. I guess it's the way they lit it because they have to light him from Quite above. I, I, that's the <laughs> one thing I didn't like, how the Cybermat, like how they transformed his mind. Well, that's where I think they have the uh, hypno wall. Because the Cybermats were trying to get Toberman to oh. relieve fear. They're trying to manipulate the brain. Hmm. So they need to get rid of their fear because that's one thing that they want to get rid of oh so basically they, they go into that room they lose their fear so they're not afraid to go down there and then they just give up well, and they no, wake I think them up. partly that was the testing area so they then that could be why they have the cyber mats it's right. like use the cyber mats to get rid of his fear uh, that's what they're planning so i think that was oh, part so of that's the all whole, they did to him at that point and yeah because then they move him later on and they work on him right, his right. physical body oh I and like then it. later on, I thought he was later part- on, they do another mind control of Toberman. Mm-hmm. So I think that was all part of it. Right. In that, since Man. it's a testing room, they were testing all this, seeing how it works so they can utilize it in the Cybermats and in the, the controller. That makes total sense now. I did not pick up on that, but that makes sense to me. <laughs> I like it. It may not be, but that's why. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it is now. good. I like it. I did like when they throw the smoke grenades. It's like, smoke? What? Smoke? And suddenly the Cyberman can't do anything but walk in circles. <laughs> I'm like, they, they could filter through that, whatever, if they're that powerful. But Captain Hopper reminded me of McCoy. Damn it, Jim! I, I need those smoke bombs! <laughs> <laughs> just sort of, the way he said it, because he's talking to Jim, it just yeah. came off in that same cadence. Well, right. let me tell you, I got an idea right here. We gotta get I'm going to go down there and I'm going <laughs> to throw some smoke grenades. I reckon. Ah, oh, for I Pete's reckon. sake. Yeah. You gotta get off this crummy planet. <laughs> uh, there, there's a scene here with uh, the doctor in Victoria where it's wonderful. She um, talks about her her dad and how her dad was killed by a Dalek, and then the the doctor kind of commiserates with her, I guess, because when they doubt uh, Victoria doubts if he can even remember his family because he's so old. The doctor says that he, if he really wants to, he can remember them, and that the rest of time, uh, the rest of the time, they sleep in his mind because. Because he has so much to think about and to remember. But I think he also is talking about grief that all of us will go through. Yeah. When we lose somebody. And it's somebody that she just lost recently mm-hmm. in the last episodes. And it's nice how he's able to help her in he's his own it, way. It do, it's what a lot of people say. Yeah. You know, it does get better with time. Mm-hmm. You'll not forget. But some of the pain goes away. And there may be a day you don't remember. And that first time you don't remember, you don't wake up with that. Yeah. It's devastating when you do. Mm-hmm. It's like, how could I have gone on living without remembering this and that's just heartbreaking and so this is done in that time period Mm -hmm. so it's not as melodramatic that we would have it now but it is saying they're always there but they're sleeping Mm -hmm. and you can bring them back when you when you want when you need them and that'll happen a great scene i thought between the two yeah i would have never thought that would have been in there but Uh i'm glad they put it in there no i'm very happy that it was one of my favorite scenes yeah and there's that great moment with the doctor. Well, oh, what happened to them, doctor? Oh, it looks like they had a complete metal breakdown. Mm-hmm. And you see Jamie behind him. Oh. <laughs> and the doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jamie. I mean, again, great little character moment. That, that reminded me earlier of when they're sitting in the weapons testing room. And he goes, everybody get away from there. Except you, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Jamie, you stay. <laughs> and I thought that was, again, uh, going back to what you were saying about how they're familiar with mm-hmm. each other. And Yeah, they're friends. Yeah, it's great. These are two it's really great, good friends where yeah. it's like, you, you you know, you could almost see Jamie saying, oh, doctor, do you want to take that back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're mates. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wait, you want to mate? No, no. A mate. A mate. <laughs> oh, because there's not going to be any mating here. Yes, that was, my, that was my terrible Catherine Tate impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Also, but what was nice, Victoria was on guard duty alone with they, the gun. Everyone yeah. else is sleeping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So or they have her sleep. being on guard duty. And mm-hmm. she was supposed to wake the doctor a half hour ago, but still stayed on guard duty. So I think that was nice. That she's doesn't she say you needed to rest? You needed to sleep. So yeah. either that or maybe Jamie was supposed to be with her and fell asleep. Who knows? But <laughs> yeah. she was alone doing the guard duty. And it was the cybermats came when the doctor was doing the guard duty. <laughs> So if she should have stayed on, she would have seen it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I, I liked uh, this part when the doctor was grabbing the tube to keep the cybermats away. I know they can jump, but it reminded me of uh, if any of you have ever had a Roomba or have known anybody yeah. with a Roomba. <laughs> like, that's all you have to do to block off anything. Just the smallest <laughs> physical barrier. And they just, they can't handle it. But then, of course, yeah, he energized it and... It's like a line of chalk yeah. with ants. Yeah. <laughs> Klieg and Captain use the weapon left in the room to break out and shoot Jim. Shocking. They believe they can still make a deal with the Cybermen and open the hatch. Klieg shouts down three times <laughs> a demand to speak with the controller. Who knew that the controller's name was Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> The controller and partially converted Toberman emerge from the hatch as the rest of the Cybermen go back into the tombs. Their power is low and needs to be recharged, but they cannot get to the recharging room upstairs. The controller agrees to give Klieg some power devices so he can conquer Earth in exchange for access to the recharging station. Once the controller is fully recharged, he mentally instructs Toberman to attack Klieg. Since Cybermen do not make deals, the controller kills Captain. Seeing her dead, and with some inspiring words from the doctor, Toberman regains enough humanity to attack and incapacitate the controller. That's a pretty dangerous special effect, that gun. I mean, Frank will disagree with me, but I think that is my favorite practical effect of mm. this story because I don't like the the post... Oh, the um, waves? The, the waves, waves, yeah. I don't like any of that. But this one, it's the ping pong ball being shot out of, like, <laughs> a lighting gun. Because it... No, like, the other one where they're in the testing room, the barrel of that weapon doesn't match up with where the light comes from because Mm -hmm. it's added afterwards Mm -hmm. and then with this gun it actually matches the barrel (laughs) yeah well whatever they did i mean there was real fire real smoke yeah uh, on a person yeah so i don't the gun part of the effect was dangerous but whatever was in the mix there i felt like wow that that's where a lot of money was spent yeah captain really gets a smoky death yeah Mm -hmm. she's just yeah pouring out of every pore of her is the smoke it's like and, oh the actress is really happy right now and i like the gun i don't disagree with you on that but uh, the ping pong ball <laughs> goes four feet to the right of where it's uh, the explosion happens i didn't even notice well maybe the ping pong ball is the casing that's ejected from the gun oh, there you <laughs> okay go. there you go all right <laughs> wow <laughs> deep logic who knew that you know when you're fighting a controller and you pick him up and you throw him he's surprisingly squishy surprisingly <laughs> light you yeah. have a dummy death yeah a little <laughs> squishy because he's just like folding all over the place and also why help the controller yeah that, that was my problem I'm like what, what? I understand what? what you put him in the recharging chamber why he's already well, like I can understand putting him in the recharging chamber to trap him but don't turn on the recharger yeah that's what I was like why turn that on yeah that or, made no sense or, or not turn it off it's like yeah. the doctor yeah. should yes. know how to yes. turn it off it's either so they, don't turn yeah. it off and let him explode from too much energy or don't turn it on at all but i think that's what they're trying to do give him too much energy it's not clear uh, though it's not clear they do mention the timing there's like a timing thing that it automatically turned off that oh thank you that's right that's right um the doctor you know puts the cyber man the controller controller in the uh revitalizing chamber because this it was then jamie tries to tie him up right to keep it closed the the, the doctor (laughs) has another rope yeah (laughs) like i need to teach you how to do (laughs) when we're done to do your knots yeah Yeah, when we're done with this we're gonna learn your knots (laughs) which yeah which is very but the machine's going on and that's revitalizing the controller and i think who turned the machine on i don't know it was on before they got in the room, but then they, they locked him in, but didn't turn off the revital, revitalization before. But I think you're right late. where the doctor is trying to overpower him and mm-hmm. then have him explode. But there was a timer already set up, and that's what they were wow. saying. Oh, now he is fully charged and it turned itself off. Maybe that's what I was thinking. It was like the doctor it's was not trying clear. to do something yeah. on the it, board, yeah. but it wasn't working, and then he busted out of there. It's not clear, so that's mm-hmm. something I have to point out. But if we didn't have that, we wouldn't get the controller breaking out of styrofoam. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes up for all of that. But that's also... <laughs> I understand it, but 
It's like it's tin but you foil. Can't and... <laughs> revitalize any of the other Cybermen now. This is the only one we've seen. Yeah. Maybe there were others, other rooms. But it's just styrofoam. funny that the only thing that can revitalize them, yeah, he breaks out of. No problem. We'll build a new one. But it's styrofoam and tin foil. It's so obvious. <laughs> he did start moving a lot faster afterwards. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Yeah, he did. That's like, true. It was a lot stronger afterwards. So logically, it works, but still. <laughs> That was some acting there. <laughs> and they only showed the three cyber mats that they sent up at the be- near the beginning. Yeah, that need a little but push. There was at times, I counted, there were seven of them yeah. that had died, yeah. at least in one shot. Well, there was so a couple shots. I wanted to know how many there actually were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These. I think you were supposed to think there were a, a ton coming up at them. Right. But, it's, but you really only saw one or two at a time, maybe three. But there was a shot where there was at right. least mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were, yeah, seven when they were all and that's, died, okay. dead. And then, uh, that's when I was started thinking, like, are we supposed to, th- I guess there's a they kept coming right yeah well they're like rats if you see one you know you've got a lot yeah. more or they never had a sh- i know we're supposed to suspend our disbelief because the cybermats didn't seem threatening but they just needed at least one shot it was more than a, an ankle high threat mm-hmm. <laughs> right that moved so slow a baby could outrun it yeah well they did have that one beauty shot of it where it was like close up to it and yeah, its, its eyes, eyes were eyeballs ooh, ooh, ooh. That sound design bugged me. It's just too present. They needed to <laughs> kick back on that a little. <laughs> another thing about Victoria is that she told Clegg and Captain, yeah, there's another weapon in that room. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just messing with them and going, they were going to run in there going, wait, if they have a weapon, we have to be prepared. So it just distracted them again. It's just, she thinks of good things. Yeah, I like how yeah. she is portrayed in this. Yeah. The doctor and Toberman descend into the hatch once again to be certain the other Cybermen are dormant. Clegg recovers and sneaks down after them, planning to reawaken the Cybermen and become their new controller. The first Cyberman he releases kills him. Toberman destroys it, and the doctor freezes the tomb again, hopefully for good. Do you notice the doctor won't take the gun mm-hmm. to go down into the hatch? Yeah, that's no, great. He's not going to take it again. I did find it funny that Klieg was like, I have a gun, now they'll listen to me. <laughs> yes. Right. Large, physically large threat, and he had this gun. Right. That reminded me of before Captain gets killed, the Cyberman opens the hatch goes to the hatch and she just closes the hatch with the lever i'm just like did you not think of that before (laughs) was this our our foamy cyberman this was foamy yes Yes. foamy cyberman death Uh, that was that the thing that people had a problem with yes I thought that so. was the, the BBC got complaints saying that that was a, that was yeah. too graphic. The shaving uh, cream coming out of the for for television. It for was children. pretty graphic. I was like, "What is this? All this stuff coming out of the Cybermen?" And did yeah. he kind of pull off sort his of. own chest plate to uh, be like injured? Yeah, right. I think so. And then they had the little plastic thing. I think that was keeping the chemicals locked in, and you can kind of see it. <laughs> you had to mix it. How did he yeah. get killed again? Was this Toberman? It might have been Toberman. I don't remember, but I just yeah. Remember Toberman kills it. And Doesn't just... Toberman pick it up and throw it down? Yeah, and, it's, and yes, he opens his own wound, but that's just to activate it. But it was supposed yeah. to be he got thrown down. Yeah, and he's like, and oh, it... the wound's open now. Oh, let me open it so that the yeah. Yeah, wow. effect and happens. That was... But because and to us it looks cheesy. I wonder what it really looked like back then. Well, the animated one, they animated a little different, but but because of what you could see. And how the size of it. Did you well, recognize it as shaving cream or Bobby and Cindy putting too much soap in the washing machine? Or, or did it look, but ooh, things are coming out. It was a different time. I mean, okay. I mean, that's just what happened in, that, just in those days. more parents not wanting to take responsibility for teaching their kids this is make-believe. When you kill a Cyberman, <laughs> yes. shaving cream panel. comes out. No. Uh, but back to what you're saying, Josh, about the animated ones, the yeah. the moon base, the second appearance of the Cybermen. I think I believe episodes two and three of that serial are animated because they're lost. Right. So only one and four are live so, action. What were you saying about the special? They've effect? they've animated that too, where the the foam comes out of oh, the but Cybermen. That's, but that was animated in yeah. recent times. Yeah, I'm just saying that that it's still there. Oh, yeah. That's a thing. <laughs> Another great moment of the doc, the second doctor, is his <laughs> test. The same thing. <laughs> his test of Klieg. Yeah, yes, where he's like, yes. you know, where he, he's trying to like. Um, he plays up all of what Klieg really wants to rule the world. Everything's going to be wonderful. How oh. is this going to be? No one will have a different thought than what you have. It's going to be so harmonious. Okay, so now I know you're truly mad and you right. are all crazy. Okay, <laughs> good. I mean, that was a great little moment mm-hmm. where it's like, I've tried. You're beyond redemption. We've done. gotten us in trouble. People are dying. Good. We're all done. Right. <laughs> When I have just seen little bits and pieces of the old classic doctors, they look so silly, and they're and they're old 
er, and I always have a thought, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm gonna buy it, I don't know if I'm gonna buy it, it's gonna be too silly, but every time I watch it, they sell me on it, and they're just so interesting and, and compelling to, to, yeah. to watch. Yeah, they really do put a little bit more effort into it than Saturday morning. Yeah. And it is, with a little bit more, which is why it's lasted so long, yeah. and the other Saturday morning shows mm -hmm. don't. Captain Hopper says that the ship is fixed, and as everyone leaves, the Doctor and Jamie stay behind to reset the electric booby traps. The controller wakes up and begins to attack. I'm not quite dead yet. <laughs> the, the Doctor and Jamie make it outside, but the controller is pushing against the doors, keeping them open. Toberman uses his cyber strength to close them, completing the electric circuit. The doors electrify, killing Toberman and the controller. Everyone leaves to go back to the ship or the TARDIS, unaware that one of the Cybermats has snuck out of the city and made its escape. I don't know why. When, when Toberman was dead, they never showed him on the ground. Until the very end. Yeah, the very end. They did. They did? Yeah. yeah. The Cybermat and Toberman, who was part Cyberman. So yeah, they, 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 they showed his whole body. Well, yeah. they, but he was dead. Like, no. You don't want to disturb the audience. And I okay. noted it because... Of all the other people that died outside, they took their bodies back to the ship. Yeah, this yeah. one and is... Toberman, bye. they're just leaving them there. Yeah. Like but also, those other people were part of the crew. Sure. And Toberman was... So he was a her. person who literally saved their lives just now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah, there should have been some explanation, like, that's radioactive or something well, I, mean, I think i mean i think for the sake of the story they had the shot of toberman that the panned up to the drawing of the cybermen so that yeah. was the, the symbolism movie. that they Ending. were doing but it was yeah. like yes toberman's final sacrifice and you couldn't take his body right. back for a proper burial right like, it's yeah, yeah so, it's uh, not uh, good as far as rating systems or whatever too like you were saying might be too graphic is that why they pretty much hid the mechanical arm that he had when he was assimilated i don't know i was just messing with you <laughs> I, I think it's I think, because of the the practical the makeup effects weren't that great it didn't look right yeah i think that's why they had to get oh, really put a, a cloak because he didn't have the cloak <laughs> yeah. most of the time and then right. it's like it's not working Put the cloak over it. You can still yeah. see the hand, yeah. but the... I don't know. That I kind of didn't like is that he didn't get changed enough. Mm -hmm. into a, you know, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I do think that was practical reasons. I think they either couldn't have the time for it, they didn't have the money for it. Right. Well, it happens again, too, in uh, Attack of the Cybermen with the Sixth Doctor. Other humans are half converted and not fully converted. Just their arm? With, do they have like more gizmos chest, on them? Their, yeah. But it reminds me of Face Off, the... The show. Nicolas Cage movie? No, the show. no, the, the makeup competition show. Remember your oh, audience. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> and they're occasionally they run out of time, uh -huh. can't do it, and they put the cloak on the character. <laughs> it's like, well, we needed the face, we needed this. Right. We're just going to cover up the rest yeah, of it. All right. So I think just because it looked different, mm -hmm. that's what happened on this. They just yeah, ran out just of some reason. Yeah. I it didn't work agree. right, or didn't mm -hmm. didn't have time to do it properly. Do you have mm -hmm. any information on the guy who played Toberman? There was, in the initial draft of the script, Toberman was supposed to be deaf and mute. Oh. Which is kind of probably the origins of why he's not very talkative. Right. And he acts very racially bad. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so that went away. I don't know why they went away, but... Um, well, they had um, to communicate with him. Yeah, but I mean, you know, Kaf can they could have thrown in a line she has the way of communicating yeah. with him, which is why she seems to be the only one who ever really communicates with him right. until the end. Right. Well, the only information I have on Toberman, he's the ac actor that played him is Roy Stewart. And he was, uh, from Jamaica. He was in uh, live and let die. Oh yeah. That's about as all as I remember. That's a good one from his, um, filmography, racial stereotypes, but that's a good one. Yeah. He was in one episode of space 1999. Oh, I love that show. I knew you would. I do kind of like the, uh, Cybermen go back into their tombs and you kind of get that creepy effect. But it's kind of like, okay, reverse the film, problem solved. You know, <laughs> you know they're reversing the film, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool because they're frozen. I admit it. I liked it. <laughs> I also think it's interesting that the doctor's like, okay, I'm going to reset all these booby traps that kill people. You want that again? Really? Thank you, doctor. Put a do not disturb sign outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some sort of warning. Because not only one, but he sets up three. Hey, yeah. the Enterprise would put warning satellites in orbit, <laughs> warning people away. 
<laughs> to me, this is just part of logic. If the doctor knows the Cybermen are down there and that they're dangerous, why doesn't he? Why does he help them open the doors? He should like let them go away and then do something to. You mean in the beginning? In the very beginning, it's just one of those things you think about later. I think the doctor knows something's going on here. I don't think he knows exactly what's down there, and he wants to find out. So he's helping them to do this so he can get all the information he can find out what's really happening. Why? It's because. If he stops them at this point, he doesn't know why they're there, what their goal is. That's sort of what I was feeling in the beginning, too. Like, why, why are they yeah. doing it? But I also got the impression that the doctor was almost like, well, they can't be a threat now because I've gotten rid of them. Before. This is odd. And if there is a new problem with them, I need to fix it. Yeah, no, I, I get too. that. You know, I mean, okay, and then, you know, the doctor, when he arrives in something, he really does kind of consider himself part of the events. Mm -hmm. So he's going to let them to he's going to let them proceed and, and, let I, them and I understand that but for me it's just like this is something dangerous you see the cyberman hieroglyphics really prominent on those doors yeah i guess i'm coming at it from the fact that he values life so he wouldn't want all those people to die having watched it multiple times questions do come up and yeah. things like why is only freezing the cybermen gonna hide them from the doctor it should be more than that yeah I, you I, know I, I, my little gripe is why didn't he destroy them yeah that too. Why is just what happened okay? But whatever. Because they well, didn't have stock footage that would have matched the tomb. <laughs> or that didn't match the tomb that they could use. And all, well. Like said, you're not just putting them to sleep. You are freezing them. And so it seemed like he was hopefully killing them. Yeah. In that effect. Because I don't think he had the other... Um, yeah, and he said the booby trap. Machines to do that, to actually blow guess, them up or anything. I, I guess I have the, the later years of the Cybermen in my head. Like, you can't let any iota yes. right. of a threat squeak through any crack possibility like what, what whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I have that threat. But like, like I said, in the very beginning of the episode, when I saw them going, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of this serial, the Tomb of the Cybermen was nearly lost for 25 years yeah. until a complete copy was recovered in 16 millimeter format from TV Asia in Hong Kong in 1992. Oh my God, that's what this was uh, discovered from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reconstructed from? Yes. Wow. And, and and with the jobs that Eugene and I have, yeah, I can totally see how it would be lost for 25 years. Yeah. Just, but the restoration looked pretty good. Oh, I it thought great. it was amazing. Oh, it was like, it, you did yeah. really well bringing yeah, the, this back. The featurette they do a side-by-side -side comparison it's really oh really impressive yeah. fraser hines who played jamie flirted with um Catherine, shirley cooklin and she was married to peter bryant the producer of doctor who at the time and she had been on the set several times as the girlfriend but now she's in makeup with a wig and he was just flirting with her and he like, didn't know it was her yeah and she, she she goes like you you know me <laughs> he's like oh <laughs> So I think that's funny. He mentions that on the commentary. And he was wearing a kilt. <laughs> the breeze made him randy. I knew we wouldn't get through this without a kilt joke. <laughs> so close. So close. So this serial is available on the DVD, Tomb of the Cybermen, by itself, with all the special features and featurettes that I mentioned. But it's also on the Doctor's Revisited set. It's the second Doctor's story that they pair up with the, the retrospective documentary. That BBC America made. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, for the 50th. It's also available on Voodoo. Oh. Um, as part of the... It, the Voodoo has a, two sections. It has classic Doctor Who, but then there's also a Doctor Who sampler. The Tomb of the Cybermen are under the Doctor Who sampler for the second Doctor. Um, but it doesn't have any of the extras. Yeah, so, you know, I, I kind of like the extras. There's commentary, like I mentioned, from uh, Victoria and Jamie. And that's on the uh, the revisit of the Doctor? No, no. Oh. The regular, the one by itself. Oh, because okay. they talk about really? Tomb of the Cybermen a lot yeah. with the second Doctor, because it's pretty much his most famous episode. Yeah. It's Tomb of the Cybermen. Final thoughts? I like it. Yeah, I liked it. I had a lot of fun. It was interesting and, and cool seeing the, the second Doctor, one of the old Doctors, getting acquainted with mm -hmm. the classic series that I really had no idea about until I started doing this with you guys. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I would probably recommend it to a fan of the current show or even just a fan of sci-fi in general. The story was, I think it would fit a modern day storytelling. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's a little slow, but uh, the character motivations um, and the plot itself is very modern. It's also good to see, like for film history's sake, TV history's sake, mm -hmm. to see the, well, everything we were talking about, the production values and, and how they dealt with it. 
and, and what was accepted back then and all the technical specifications that we were talking <laughs> about, it's good for that reason as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Oliver, that it is similar to a modern story. It's a good storyline. Their timing's a little bit different. So even the banter between Jamie and the doctor goes a lightning fast at times mm -hmm. where they would play it up a little bit more now. But it's a great dynamic, great set of characters. It shows who the doctor is and the similarities that run through who the doctor is and all the different reincarnations. It's like, I'm liking the second doctor a lot more. He's moving up on my list. I mean, Jamie almost feels in Jamie's head like he's an equal to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And you can just get that from this. When he was in with uh, the one guy the explaining shirt. all of... Oh, I had his name. <laughs> That's fine. Is that like shirt. the red shirt? Hayden. Oh, Hayden. Hayden. Thank you. So he's in with Hayden and Hayden starts explaining all of the technical reasons why there's light in this room. And Jimmy says, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't need to know all the technical stuff, just, you know, the basic stuff. I think it's a good character who from the 1700s isn't phased by all this. It's mm -hmm. like things work back then, things work now for basic reasons, you know, and he goes along with it. So I think it's a good you know, companion to have. I think that's why everybody liked Jamie. Mm -hmm. I think maybe what, what surprised me why I like these earlier doctors as much as I do is that just looking at them in clips and pictures, they look like sidekicks. Mm -hmm. They don't look like the hero of the show. But then, so when I'm actually watching them, they're extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of reaching the point where the second doctor is higher up on my list of favorite doctors than the ninth. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you can you can have your own opinion. I know. No matter how wrong it is. No. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I really, really like the second doctor. Since the second doctor was the first new doctor, he and the writer specifically went a different direction. They really wanted to stand apart from the first doctor. And the characterization of this second doctor, the way he is, the, his curiosity, his eccentricities. And his flute. We didn't get to that in this yeah. episode, but he has a flute. <laughs> but he has a, a quirky possession. Set the tone for every doctor after it. This is how you play a renegade Time Lord from Gallifrey. Even Matt Smith says he steals mannerisms of the second Doctor. You see Matt Smith, he's constantly <laughs> rubbing his hands together. He'll tell you flat out, I stole that from Pat Patrick Troughton. Patrick Troughton made the Doctor fun. And I think for me, the Tomb of the Cybermen has everything that I like to talk about in things. It's, um, it's old, it's older, it has history, it's black and white, it's an uh, older film production. Um, and you see the wires, you see the stagecraft, the obvious stagecraft, and yet the story is compelling. The characters are compelling. They're selling it 100, 200% to you. And you have to look at it through the lens of this was made back then and not this was made for HD 16 by 9. This was made for 4 by 3 tube TVs. And what they did back then was great and the limitations that they had. And so I think that the Tomb of the Cybermen, there's a reason this is one of the ones that people put on lists of things to watch from classic Doctor Who. But yet, I still like making fun of it. I still like pointing out the flaws <laughs> because that's just what it is. Well, it's also what we do on the modern show, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if it didn't have that, I mean, like, this is all right. <laughs> <laughs> so that wraps up classic Who, Tomb of the Cybermen. We'll see you next time when the future becomes the present. Becomes the present. You've just listened to an episode of Who Knew? Our wonderful theme music is by Michael Grady. Find him on Facebook at The Universe Explodes. All our episodes are engineered by our very own Auburn. Find me at auburnbinkley.com. You can find this show in several places. Follow us on Twitter at Who Knew Podcasts. Subscribe, review, and listen to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Or our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Who Knew Podcast. All our episodes are on Who Knew Podcast.com. You can leave comments there or email us at Who Knew Podcast at gmail.com. This podcast is inspired by Doctor Who, the longest running sci fi show in history and especially the revival spearheaded by Russell T. Davis. Thanks to Russell, Sidney Newman, Verity Lambert, Ron Grainer, and all those involved in the adventures of our favorite Time Lord. Your work continues to inspire and entertain. Curious yeah, about that. I, I have no, no insight into that. I know, I'm not asking you. <laughs> no, I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to more of these. Mm-hmm. I'll try to give you good ones. Yeah. yeah. This is, and this, again, this is a good story arc. Yes.